In one of my previous videos, I spent some time reviewing the Dune Margers, the Titan exclusive exotic leg pieces, which you can see that I'm wearing right now with the Barrier Ethos shader that I picked up from Ava Levante. Now, in that video, I kind of discussed a little bit about why I like this one and the overall perks that really benefit my play style and altered the way that I play in PvP. I wanted to take this time to kind of go over one of my favorite things about these particular sets and the perks that can go with it, in addition to other gear that allow you to move as fast as lightning and being a flash titan, being able to speed through pretty much every single circumstance and hopefully make you faster than your opponent in PvP and even PvE if that's what you're into. So first and foremost, let's take a look at what it is that the Dune Marchers do, just in case you missed the last video. The Dune Marchers highlighted perk is the increased sp uh, sprint speed and move faster with aimed weapon and tighter sprinting turn radius. Now this is particularly beneficial considering that the accompanied perk increases the amount of shotgun ammunition you can carry. That allows me to have not only more ammunition for a shotgun, but also increases the reason why I would have a shotgun equipped in, you know, whatever situation that is, PvP or PvE. So having an accompanied perk for shotgun, considering that PvP is completely dominant by shotguns right now, means that I'm going to be aiming down a barrel of a shotgun uh, for the variety of the game mode, whether I'm taking shots or I'm aiming down my own and firing back. But I wanted to look at what makes this particular set extremely useful and how you can make it the fastest possible. So naturally, with exotics, you have a special perk that doesn't require any experience, so we get that from the get-go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the memory of Jolder. So Jolder has a really rad perk on here, and that is the remote moving of the sprint cooldown penalty, which means if I'm sprinting, stopping, sprinting, stopping, I can definitely do that without having to push down on my thumbstick and being like, damn it, I totally have to wait until I can get that uh, delay removed and uh, then I can start sprinting again. Don't have to worry about that. Memory of Jolder being the case is my favorite artifact thus far that I've obtained since Rise of, Rise of Iron's launch, and that's why I have it equipped. Now, the other big thing here, too, is your subclass. Now, I made a striker. There could be some other benefits in Defender or Sunbreaker, but that's really up to you. Now, the build that I have, you're going to have a variety of perks here. All this stuff is going to be exactly how uh, you want to set it up. I really wouldn't worry about these so much, but these particular three columns are the ones that you want to pay attention to. For me, I've got Titan Codex 2, which focuses a lot more on speed and toughness. Now, you'll notice over in the top left, Armory and Agility is maxed out completely. Uh, well, I don't want to say maxed out completely. Let's go ahead and reword that. I want to say maxed out based on my build. Have Having armor and agility perfectly aligned is really going to be extremely helpful because I've also got headstrong sprint faster and sprinting increases the leap distance of Fist of Havoc in addition to Titan Codex 6 training focused on raw speed. Now, I don't think that I have the ability to go any further with the agility, but you can increase recovery and uh, armor as well, but armor only gets a little bit more, not really a whole lot there. I uh, would prefer having these three particular perks, Shoulder Charge, Titan Codex, Headstrong, and Titan Codex again. So two and six is really gonna be helpful increasing your agility. Now the other thing is your weapons. So your weapon loadout is also gonna depend on your overall agility and your speed too. And the reason why is because in this case, we're looking at the Mida multi-tool, which is just overall an excellent weapon to have. I'm rocking the Spec Ops ornament right now, but it's particular perk here. This weapon boosts movement speed and fires on a hair trigger. Now this is a perk that you actually have to unlock via experience, obviously because it's in the fourth column here overall. Well, I guess fifth, if you kind of take a look at these particular columns, but you know, be that as it may. The other thing is, is column number three slash four is lightweight. When held, this weapon grants plus two character agility. Now we're not given an actual number that uh, kind of lets us know what our agility is, but this isn't the only gun that can get lightweight. Lightweight can drop on a variety of weapons. I've seen it on shotguns, I've seen it on pulse rifles, I've seen it on a variety of primary and special weapons, and I'm probably going to say that I've seen it even on heavy, but I can't think of a particular example in my mind right now, but I'm sure it does. But considering that you get third eye, lightweight, and my multi-tool uh, here as a uh, particular loadout, this makes you extremely fast. You have the ability to zip on through with no sprint delay. You have great agility, which is really going to help in one of the uh, raids that you would be rocking. So if I'm running through doing the Taken King raid, and I'm jumping through that uh, kind of shift jumping puzzle, or if I'm running through the Wrath of Machine, and I'm doing that jumping area, which is pretty much everything about that raid, from location to location, you're going to be jumping like crazy. Or if I'm just running in PvP, being able to run and then turn around immediately, and this might not be immediately noticeable to you, but you can see it. You can see it if you're accustomed to not rocking these particular build sets or the weapon or dune marchers or anything like that. So you can definitely see this Heavy if you're toggling. Thank you for that, Shax. You can definitely see it if you're toggling back and forth between different sets of armor and weapons, and I can tell you right now, this is going to be one of the fastest ways that you can go and makes you extremely mobile. Now, not only that, but available. 
Titans are going to be more of a tank. They're used to having a little bit more armor, doing a little bit more damage, whereas Warlocks are going to be more majestic with their magic abilities and distance and shooting their fire with, uh, obviously, things like the Stormcaller subclass. But then, of course, you have the Hunter, which typically is known for his agility and speed and mobility, but this makes you to be a force of reckon. So that means that if you are going against someone like a Hunter that has maximum agility and speed or a Warlock that is just sipping around with Stormcaller, this is going to be an excellent way to avoid those Shadow Shots from the Hunter or avoid those blade dancers or avoid storm color or avoid that nova bomb now i can jump pretty damn high to the point where i'm even jumping out of the map now it has to be like kind of like that tree so for example just a just a heads up i want to make this clear if i'm jumping straight up in bannerfall there's no real issue here but if i'm actually getting too close to the tree and then i jump up that's when i'm seeing that and that's when it's kind of being a little bit uh annoying regarding the overall uh height that I'm jumping here, but I can jump right over this tree, which makes these a rad set of build for the Titan overall. Speed increase, being able to fire really fast, and being able to, you know, just get out of any situation. If I am running, and then I'm stopping, and then running again, I mean, you're going from zero to as fast as the Titan can run, uh, immediately from, you know, nothing. And being able to turn, obviously this isn't really like a, a conventional practical means of, of view, but you can see that if I am looking really fast, I'm like, oh, enemy, bam, 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 oh, he's right there, oh, bam, 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 then you do have that extra uh, line of sight because you can turn so fast and be able to just do the damage and just hit, you know, whatever enemy. Now, be a better sharpshooter than me, of course, but... This will really help it too. If you're using a shotgun as well, I find this extremely beneficial because if I'm aiming down these sights, being able to turn this fast, I feel like when you're using something like a rocket launcher or a shotgun, you do feel a little bit heavier weighed down or even sluggish for that matter. So I like having the agility and the speed increased here because if I am in a position where I'm surrounded by enemies, I can do a reasonable amount of damage and still stay kind of on the move and on the go and avoid any incoming fire from enemies. Now shotguns obviously have a minimal amount of range compared to other weapons, but I would say that PvP is a shotgun man's game at this point, so having a shotgun that has decent range, but being able to move around with this build makes it pretty damn dangerous. Now, if I am using something like a machine gun, which is obviously a lot heavier, you can notice that I'm moving around pretty smoothly, pretty quickly, and being able to use a rocket or a other heavy machine gun like this makes you pretty damn uh, advantageous in a lot of mobility situations. And considering, I would say that the jump on the Titan is one of the better jumps too, in terms of overall height and distance, I mean, adding that extra agility and adding that extra mobility is something that you really can't complain too much about. And plus, shoulder charge. I mean, they nerfed that quite a bit. Bungie did with one of its recent updates, but I can tell you, even so, if you've practiced with it enough, the nerf, while you can definitely see it and feel it, you can still make up for it by being able to track your enemy and do that final blow of damage because you can keep up with them. If you're running this and you're running a shoulder charge, notice how quick that shoulder charge comes up. Yeah, they nerfed it by, I think, like a little bit more than a second but I think it's roughly between 10 and 11 seconds before another shoulder charge can pop up. But a lot of times I'll end up running, and then I'll stop, and then I'll run again, and that kind of gives me the vibe that maybe I'm, I'm able to accrue that faster. So I'll see that here, and then we stop, and then one, two, three, there we go. Three seconds from start to stop. So if I actually do it and then stop running, let's go again. One, two, three. So a little bit more than three seconds in between. So three seconds to get that to go, I mean, that's that's fantastic. But I feel like if I do a charge and then I keep on running without stopping, so if I charge it and I'm still running here, let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, Okay, well, a little bit more than five seconds or so. Okay, so you kind of get the vibe there that not only is that nerf not really going to hurt you because you have that quick mobility, but you can definitely bounce back and forth between enemies doing multiple shoulder charges if you're between three and six seconds away. Now, that all depends on your play style. If that's what you like. If you're a titan like me and you'd like to get, uh, you know, as much speed as you can. I mean, look, there are hunters that are going to be wearing bones of AO in PvP. That's what I do. And they bounce around and jump around like crazy. It is ridiculous. But being able to keep up with them speed-wise makes this build extremely advantageous, especially if you want to go ahead and run in and then bash them with a punch or bash them with a, uh, a smash on the hammers or something like that because you'll notice that jump that jump was pretty deep i mean that was a that was a distant jump now there are other exotics that will kind of accent the the thunder slam down here the uh, striker fist of havoc but for me this is what i like i i definitely prefer speed and mobility over anything else increasing your jump distance with your slam being able to have a uh 
a multiple shoulder charge uh, going on as long as you're, you know, staying mobile, staying active, staying uh, fast. If you didn't have something like the artifact, uh, the Jolter artifact, then you're going to find that you're going to end up having a longer time in between your ability to do shoulder charges because of the sprint delay, and that'll add over to that and get you closer to that 10 to 11 second range, which could be the uh, break-all, end-all means of survival in PvP or PvE situations. And especially if you're running Axis on the Wrath of Machine, you're going to find that bouncing and covering your uh, your fellow teammates to make sure that you're slamming on Axis's back to do those additional damage phases, I mean, you're definitely going to want to have something that makes you as fast and agile as possible because, let's be honest, you can't count on anyone these days. But that's it. So just to recap, we got ourselves the uh, Handy Dandy multi mita tool all... Uh, all decked out with experience. We got ourselves a Dune Marchers. We have Titan Codex 2 and 6 and Headstrong for our Striker subclass, but again, you can probably find a similar build and speed with Defender and Sunbreaker, but Striker is definitely the one for me. And being able to have this particular artifact kind of makes it all for me, too, uh, being able to remove that sprint cooldown penalty, but but that's it. There you go. You got yourself a, a handy-dandy speed build. There's going to be no Titan as fast as you in PvP, and Hunters and Warlocks will be on the lookout for your uh, Thunder Fist as you come down raining from the heavens with a strike that'll end all of your enemies in a reasonable proximity but there it is the flash titan the speed demon of titans in pvp and pve so if you guys find this to be a helpful build or if you guys have an alternate build that you want to recommend please do so this is the one that i like but i haven't thought of all things i haven't considered all possibilities but if you guys have something that works better for you for speed let me know let's talk about it in the comment section below and if you found this build to be maybe more beneficial than the one that you currently have or just helpful overall give me a thumbs up because that always helps and uh as always guys stay hunting and grinding and i will see you guys in the next video take it easy